Hey everybody, it's Robert coming to you from the woods of Talbot County, Georgia. And right now I am in an African American burial ground that began as a burial ground for uh, people who were enslaved on the Mahone Plantation and their descendants continued burying out here. And recently it has been heavily vandalized uh, by tree poachers. People coming into the cemetery to steal the historic trees that are in this place. So I've made it my personal mission to try to rectify some of this damage out here. We're gonna be cleaning up some of the mess that they left behind, also fixing any damaged fieldstone markers. On this video, we get some more of the debris cleared from this cemetery and I'm joined by Cecil Young and we catalog 82 graves in only part of this cemetery. We also uncover some graves that haven't been seen for many, many years. You won't want to miss this video. All right, so we got some more of this area cleaned up, some more graves exposed, and also started into some of this deadfall over here. Still have this to go back here from the previous damage. But Mr. Cecil is out here with me today, so we are going to go ahead and start trying to survey this and flag out some of these graves, uh, which is especially helpful since Cecil's here to help me do that, help me spot them. So I'm going to come back over here to where we started the cleanup and we're going to kind of divide the cemetery into sections um, and try to do this half and then move over with this. There's one thing that I wanted to point out on camera. I talk a lot about cemetery artifacts and stuff that you may find in a cemetery that belongs to the cemetery and should just be left there that people may consider trash. And this is a good example of a cemetery artifact right here, this old enameled bowl. That you can see somebody tried to turn it into some kind of marker, maybe, um, by concreting the sides of it with these uh, these little river stones in there. And it looks like maybe chicken wire to hold it all together. Most of it's come off, but that's sitting right here, and it's been sitting there for a real long time. I just tripped across it and uh, kind of dug it out to look at it and see what it was. But I think that this is set on. Either it, it originally belongs to this grave or it belongs to this grave here because this is another one right here that's actually still mounded. And you can see an indention beside it and then of course, furthermore out that way. But like I said, now that I've got somebody else out here with me today, uh, we're gonna try to go ahead and start on our survey and mark out these graves, at least in this section of the cemetery that we've got kind of cleaned up. So we've been hard at work uh, finding and flagging these graves. We're actually up to 45 graves in just this small section. And see all the flags dotting everything. 
And anything that we're not sure about, I did not number, like just a field stone that didn't seem to belong to a grave. But in just this small section from Miss Jenny Horton's grave, which you can see over there behind the, uh, the cut stump all throughout here, we flagged all of that. Then up to the stump over there marking these graves. Then over to this area we found a bunch. But on grave number 45 we found uh, something pretty interesting. First of all, every single one of these boxwoods that you see growing out here has a grave underneath it. All of these were planted intentionally at the head of a grave. This one is just a field stone under this boxwood. You can see down there. But on grave number 45, Cecil used his probe in here because we saw this little base. And so he started tapping the ground. You can hear that there's something pretty far down there. You can see it right there. And uh, he said he felt engravings on it. And I do too. Look how far down. That's uh, three inches down under the dirt here. Yeah, definitely. Definitely marked. This little baby boxwood right here growing on it. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out because this is not this is not an original planted part of the boxwood here. This is just something that sprung up. Cecil's got tools and a brush. He's a professional. There it is. I guess it is. It feels smoother than most of the ones. Let's see, if I can't. Get right here for a minute. Oh, this is born. born September 1932. Alright, I guess name is gonna be up here. Yeah, it's under there. I'm just gonna temporarily move this out of the way. Watch out, any dog! Grady. Grady. Terry. Grady Terry. Grady Jerry. J E R R Y. And the last name here, too. Born. It's born. I wonder if it is. A, I bet it's a Terry. They just wrote the uh, T fancy. 
Terry would be a real common name around here. Oh, that's a grave that ain't been seen in a real long time. The Terry Plantation ain't too far away from here, and I think that there are Terry's supposed to be buried here, or at least people connected to the Terry, so it be his mother could have been a Mahone or something like that. Born September 2nd, 1932. Died October 5th, 1940. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to set that marker back on it. And I, I bet it had a, uh, yeah, you can see where a little bit of mortar or concrete or whatever was on the top. It was probably an urn or something, something on top, maybe a lamb. And someone got it, unless it's here too. Okay, there he is. All right. All right, so that's grave number 45, and uh, Grady, probably Terry, this eight-year-old child here, the boxwood, buried at his uh, head of his grave, and that just, that goes to show definitely how these graves can get lost here. And just to show you again how much dirt there was on top of that, look at that right there. It's four inches. Wow. I have to bring something back out here to try to expose that one a little bit more next time. All right, so after we found grave number 45 under the boxwood, young Grady Terry, we continued on surveying the cemetery out. And we're actually on grave number 80 now. Now, keep in mind, we're only surveyed half of the cemetery. We used this tree drag line pretty much as a divider through the cemetery. We did do three right there that were really evident but otherwise we've simply kept to this side of the cemetery and uh, got up to 80 graves. And we thought we were just about done with this side when we found another interesting discovery, one that I absolutely never knew about. Many times as I've been out here, right behind, right behind Miss Jenny Horton here, we were flagging and, and looking at the graves. And I was standing here, and let's see if y'all see it. I was standing here, talking on the phone, and I noticed that the ground looked like it was raised right here. Put my hand down and said, no way. And there's a concrete slab right here. It's grave number 81. So he still has got the big brush today. I, I need to get one of those. When I came through here a couple years ago, I thought I'd read every grave that was out here. And the other Robert and I had uncovered a few, but we obviously missed a lot. Blank. Sir? It looks blank. Yeah. Oh, it keeps going. Oh, that's a big one. This is grave number 81, at least, which is newer than uh, I would think there would be out here with the poured concrete slab. But that's it. Another one, another one found here. Let's see. Check something real quick.
make sure that there's nothing else. Okay, I'll make sure there are no other slabs in this row. I think this is definitely Jenny Horton's grave right here. You can see a little bit of an indention for her. That's certainly a separate grave right there. And if you look out behind it, you can see all the flags, each one marking an individual grave. Thing there? I see a, a mound yeah. right here, and I'm not sure if it's because there's an indention there or if that's the grave. That's a, that's a grave right there, mm -hmm. for sure. So that's 82. All right, so we're fixing to call it a day out here at the uh, Mahone Ingram Cemetery. We got some more cleaned up, but more importantly, we were able to identify 82 graves out here. And of course, big shout out to Cecil for joining me today. Um, is big help, in, especially in cataloging these graves. And that's what he's really good at too. So I'm gonna give you a little walk around real quick before we leave out of here and just kind of show you how many graves are out here and how they are all in rows. We'll start out here towards the road. And bear in mind, we've only done maybe a third of the cemetery. We haven't touched anything from that line over. Uh, so 82 graves just in a third of the cemetery. So we'll kind of start here. There's an indention, very clear indention. And there's a burial there. Didn't seem to be any more in that row, but if we come here, we've got a row with two there. Look for the orange flags. Two there. And then the row gets deeper here. We've got... All of these up to these two very large indentions over here. I'm not sure why these graves would have formed such a big indention. They did, and it's, it's pretty interesting. That one has a field stone right there. So you can see if you look down and look at all the orange flags going up, you can see a row right there. And then, of course, the other two. But then it gets to even more so where you look down this row. You see all the orange flags marking graves going all the way down. And then we stopped at the, uh, the third, third way through the cemetery, at only doing the part that's already been really cleaned up. And that row continues, though. And down here, you've got children's graves. We can see the row there as well. And then here, another row, starting with this very large indention. A row of graves behind Miss Jenny Horton here. Of course, on the other side of Miss Jenny, we've got a few graves. Flagged her grave too, so everyone is counted here. You can see the row there. And then another row there, it kind of goes around right there. These two. Then again, we really start seeing these long rows here. This was an initial flagging where I started it, starting there, and all the way down. And over here, another row. And then when we go over to this side, the graves get kind of more, uh, less in a row. But we can still see another row here. Kind of a row there, but then this row continues on throughout the cemetery. And 
and all the way to this point, which is where we stopped flagging. So if you just look out there at the sea of orange flags and know that each one of those is a burial and you quickly realize how many burials can be in a place like this, because again, this is just a third of the cemetery, if that, and all of that is still un unsurveyed and the rows continue out. I can see them there and there. And of course, many more burials that are up here, some of them newer. So there are a lot of graves in this place. And of course, you know, we've, we've flagged, I think it's 82 graves over here. We've probably missed, you know, f between five and 10 over here just because they're not uh, visible to us. Almost missed the concrete slab behind Jenny, which shows just how, you know, covered up a grave can get so you never know it was there. So, you know, you add a few to that and you quickly realize how there can be 300 burials in a place that's not very big. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time, probably back out here as we continue to uh, restore this place.